The devastating power of George Foreman is something of a legend. Big George Foreman. In his career, he's copied the baleful stare of the man who once was his boxing hero, Sonny Liston. Before Mike Tyson, there was Foreman. A mountain of a man. Who scared opponents and spectators alike. Get it, and he is knocked out. George Foreman wins his first professional fight. He claimed what was once considered the greatest prize in sports. Twice, as two different fighters, two different human beings. Raised in Houston's Fifth Ward, an infamously impoverished community riddled with crime and violence. It's such a shame when you're so poor and you don't want everyone else to know that you're so poor. Really, you're not poor, you're poor. It was here Foreman became the king of the street fight. Because I kept fighting, getting into fights, picking on people, pushing around. I was a bully. Foreman found refuge and purpose inside the square circle. He began training at age 17. Then all of a sudden, uh, you get into boxing where anger is applauded. Who got you involved in boxing? That was a trainer, Doc Broder. The 1968 Olympics were only a year away, but Doc promised to make George one hell of a boxer. As a young man, he was regarded as one of boxing's most brutal contenders. His sparring sessions aren't just a training routine. They are instead intense efforts by sparring partners to simply survive a three-minute round with a man whose punching power is frightening. 1967, I had my first boxing match. Well, as you have seen, we have some young bombers to prepare for the Summer Olympic Games in boxing. I wanted by knockout. It inspired me to be going to be a Golden Glove champion in San Francisco. First time I'd ever heard his name. George was brand new. He had only been in a boxing ring for a couple of months at that time. George raced through the Golden Gloves and into the Olympics. A jolting right hand to the jaw. Where his uncanny power was too much for even the veteran fighters. George Foreman wins the gold medal of the 19th Olympiad. For Foreman, boxing was a means to lift himself out of poverty. How much Foreman has progressed since his Olympic days remains to be seen. You know, even though you were having all this professional success at that time, you were pretty angry. In his first 40 fights, he knocked out 92.5% of his opponents. Foreman with a left that is like a lamppost. A recurring piston, if you will. The three that really scared the hell out of everyone were Sonny Liston first, then George Foreman, who was like yep. an improvement on Sonny Liston, and then Mike Tyson. Yep. George mimicked his persona after the great Sonny Liston. I met Sonny Liston. He became my role model. He had to be the most angry fella I'd met. He'd look right through you. He had this very forbidding, intimidating, utterly hostile manner about him. I came to believe early on that George had acquired some of Sonny's characteristics directly from Sonny. He learned how to glower and he learned how to punch. George is doing his best imitation of Sonny Liston. All of a sudden, you have this stare coming at you. George Foreman! He wanted to scare his opponents, to be seen as a monster. It worked. Got him a little bit, a left hand staggers him. Oh, when I was in the ring, you really saw the best of me. Outside the ring, I was really some terrible fellow because I did some things to people that mostly... In the ring, I'm not ashamed of my boxing matches, but outside the ring, some of the things we did, I did. I'm ashamed of to this day. They can't do anything at all, and it's Foreman just pounding him into the canvas. And the referee, Arthur McCanty, stops the fight in the second round. Look at George pulverized. I thought that with my fist, I could knock any man out. The media, his peers, and the fans all viewed him as the villain, the monster, who hurt and punished his foes with little remorse. Foreman's dynamite power in both hands is making him the scourge of the heavyweight division. George Foreman is now the number one contender for the heavyweight championship. And the question is, 
Who's going to stop this Foreman steamroll? It looks like Muhammad Ali and even champion Joe Frazier will have to make room for this Houston Tornado, George Foreman. In his first title fight, Foreman would be pitted against fan favorite Joe Frazier. Frazier had recently defeated Muhammad Ali and was viewed as the far superior boxer. Conventional wisdom heading into the Frazier fight was that George was a raw sort of rookie without the depth or the background to beat a great fighter like Joe Frazier. Scoring 34 knockouts. He's six feet four and has a reach of 78 and a half inches. George Foreman, the challenger. Because Joe Frazier had beaten Muhammad Ali and was undefeated, they didn't see how this young kid could win. He was undefeated and was coming off the Ali win, and he was a three and a half to one favorite. I must break you. Frazier, watch out! And then he's got these hands that are literally like canned like hands. Hands, yep. And he just. Thunk. George was powerful. There's no doubt about that. I and mean, he was out there to get me. His power seemed to be a weapon unlike any the sport had seen. Even the greatest of boxers could not stand up to him. It was absolutely devastating. No one could believe it. And from that point on, George was regarded as invincible. Dropping death charges on me, man. I couldn't survive him. Foreman demolished the great Joe Frazier, knocking him down six times. You've been known as the hardest puncher ever. Frazier has never taken this kind of punishment. All I had was this one punch, and if I could hit you with you, I would hit you with it. I could take you out. If I miss you, you'd win on decision. <laughs> it's target practice for George Foreman. And remember how he knocked Joe Frazier upside his head when Joe Frazier literally tried to run away from him? The winner is George Foreman! You to be heavyweight champion of the world, as soon as it happens to you, it's like uh, John L. Sullivan, uh, Braddock. All the Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, Mohammed, it's like they all just pour right into you and you feel that moment, you feel I am the heavyweight champion of the world. George was now a celebrity and the couple was besieged by reporters. It's that those guys weren't Tony Tubbs and guys like that. It was Joe Frazier and Kenny Norton. Yes. Frazier had split two yes. fights with Ali. I never thought that Mike Tyson was the scariest, in his prime, the scariest fighter. The person that I thought about was George Foreman. Well, to be a boxer, number one, you gotta be stupid. <laughs> you gotta halfway be crazy. We think we are likely to have a slugfest. We don't expect the fight to go all the way. And that quick punishing right floors him for the second time. And any of his fights, when he, when he scored those big knockouts, uh, he would really brutalize the guy before he got him out of there. Final knockdown takes place. Look at Roman's eyes, utterly glazed. Foreman with that impassive face. Now, Foreman's being acknowledged as the winner. Roman still cannot get up. Kenny Norton had split two fights with Ali, 24 rounds, and was, Ali was lucky to win the second one. And he broke Ali's jaw, and Foreman knocked them both out in two rounds. And then turned around and lost to Muhammad Ali, 12 rounds on a split decision back in September. A combination of cheers and catcalls, definitely the favorite here. As far as the crowd is concerned, is Ken Norton. As far as the odds are concerned, it's George Foreman. It's the most menacing heavyweight of all time. It would be George Foreman. I was going to be the best heavyweight that ever existed. He is with Ken Norton, and the reason for that, of course, is that he doesn't like George Foreman one bit. Do you really believe, Ali, that he yeah, can beat man. this man? Yeah, man. Yeah, the man went 24 rounds with me, broke my jaw in the first round. I was in shape and second fight. In those days, he was a bully. The people around him were afraid of him. Foreman had really brutalized the people who trained him, and they were terrified of him. Even the hell he gave me, as fast as I am, as accurate as I am, I couldn't whoop Ken Norton. I had beaten the best in Joe Frazier, no doubt about it, I had beaten the best. 
people had something to say about that. I said, you know what? I'm going to kill one of these fellows. Then they'll shut up. And it looks like Norton has really been staggered. Foreman was a guy who destroyed Frazier, destroyed Kenny Norton. Whipped by Kenny Norton. I knocked Kenny Norton out easily. Once again, Muhammad Ali found himself in great demand. The WBC and the WBA mandated the fight. The public certainly wanted it, and the media clamored for it. I think George Foreman will knock Muhammad Ali out, and it'll end Muhammad Ali's career. All the boxers were scared, handlers were scared. The only person that didn't appear scared of Foreman was Ali. The Foreman that fought Ali, 40 and 0, 37 knockouts. Undefeat, unbeatable, the guy's never gonna lose. Everybody was scared, but Muhammad Ali himself. Have you fought many guys who were talkers in their ring? No, I never get a chance to talk much. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you get to know a fella, it's all over. As for the fight itself, discussion centered not on who would win, but on how much punishment Foreman would dish out. The time may have come to say goodbye to Muhammad Ali. And now we understand that George Foreman is about to make his way to the ring. Because very honestly, I don't think he can beat George Foreman. Cosell was convinced that Ali was washed up. This guy was the closest thing to a human monster I, I'd ever seen before. He was certainly the scariest boxer. Look at this now as they stare. Muhammad Ali beginning to talk to George Foreman. They're really putting the stare on each other. I looked him in the eye to stare him down and said, Oh, George, you were in school when I was beating Sonny Liston. Gone in the past four years beyond two rounds in any fight. George he knew that the one weakness in, in this monster who was thought of as unbeatable was his stamina. The first round, all of us yelled out, get off the ropes. And he would just say, shut up, I know how to do it. Well, I would say that the, the round was very even for that time. And Ali totally got into the guy's head, and he didn't even realize it. It was... Muhammad Ali's fertile mind that created the rope of Here we go, round number two, the determined Ali get off his stool in between rounds. George Foreman sat down all the way. Ali leans on the rope, which the Tennessee is riding him. Starting second or third round, when he went to the ropes, he was calling Foreman all kinds of names. Any name of ugliness you can think of. And you can come to talk. Definitely serious. Tremendous combination. He fought just like a, your initial bomb, just lay on the rope and take a whip him. But this time, he did it with character. He said, hey, I'm going to weather this storm. The rope of dopes uh, was something that was invented by Muhammad Ali that night. I must say, I don't understand those tactics, Joe, staying on the ropes and letting him hit It just shows you the power of intellect and intelligence and how that can compete against anything. And believe me, I was a big, powerful giant in the ring with Muhammad. I mean, a knockout on him. He stood up to me. Foreman setting him up against the rope. What a... George Foreman, so young, so strong. Not supposed to do, leaning up against the ropes. Four punches downstairs on Ali. So fearless. I had him beat, I really did. And really thought I had him beat up in the body, had him tired. Continues to talk, continues. Against George Foreman, he does away with his opponents, one after another, in less than three rounds. George not going that type of distance a long time. He was treading in water, you know, never been in before. This is the furthest that George Foreman has gone in a fight since 1972. Misses the right hand. Ali is definitely confusing him. Missing the shots that he missed, it drained him. Look at Foreman's face, he does look tired. Nobody knew the strength of Muhammad Ali. He was manhandling him, just like Archie said, grabbing him, and he emptied the guy's tank. I was afraid he was going to get killed by a George Foreman that many of our young viewers don't know.
thought he was hurt. I thought his body was hurt. He came back. He hit form with everything, and he winked at me. Oh, yes, there's no doubt about it. He winked right over here to this corner. You know, the guy really was the people's choice, and he was the people's choice because he loved them. I'd hate to predict it any fight, but my goodness, those people who said Foreman would win in a flash have certainly been proved wrong. Then about the seventh round, he asked me, that all you got, George? That, that was like a nightmare. I couldn't believe it. I just knew I was going to knock him out in a few seconds. And after eight rounds, I am laying on the canvas, listening to a referee. I was embarrassed. devastating thing in the world to lose the coveted heavyweight championship of the world. I'd worked so hard to get it. And he doesn't, you really, your life is going to change once more mm -hmm. from all of this confidence and to devastation. He was beaten mentally more than physically. I come home and I was angry for a long time. I figured I'd been betrayed by my managers. I'd been given things in my water, the ropes were loose. I had all the kind of excuses that filled me with hatred and revenge. I felt like I'd lost everything, not just the championship of the world, but I'd lost myself as a man. Many have felt that Foreman's psyche was materially damaged by the disaster in Zaire of 15 months ago. Foreman's stamina having become suspect in the Zaire affair. After the defeat, the mystique of Foreman had vanished. The intimidating bully destroyer of worlds persona was replaced by questions about Foreman's boxing skills. If Foreman is to come back and get another shot at the crown, he must win this fight. And it would help to win it impressive. The face of George Foreman, and for that matter, of Ron Lyle, each speaking for itself. Just look at this. He would immediately be tested by fellow brawler Ron Lyle. We're about to bring you what we think promises to be a slugfest, a legitimate heavyweight contest. One of the great back and forth wars in boxing history. A good right by Lyle, and he's got Foreman in trouble. He's got him in trouble. I was hit so hard, I didn't even feel it until I hit the canvas. Foreman is down. It started with a right, then a left. I've never been hit so hard in my life. Now Foreman's fighting back. Foreman trying to hold together. Now, now George struck back. Now, now George fought back. Right. If every boxing match, world title match, would have ended like George Foreman, Run Lyle, heavyweight title match, there wouldn't be any UFC. <laughs> some punches, and just speaking in general terms, you said some punches are so ferocious that they don't hurt. They actually will interrupt communication between the tower and the ground. Foreman goes down. Foreman goes down. Lyle fights and back. Again, if only it had hurt, I would have got, would not have gotten up. It just, it was like it, you are no longer the same person. You see your legs wiggle, and you're not in control of yourself. Now Lyle is hurt! Now Lyle is hurt! What an incredible fight! Utterly without boxing skill. Just punching away. Each fighter, in turn, leaving himself open. This time it may be over. This time it may be over. Lyle's not going to make it. Lyle, he's not going to make it. A knockout in the fifth round. He won in spectacular fashion, but the rematch with Ali was not given. George, do you think Ali's maybe backing down from a, another meeting with you? There's no telling what he's doing. I would love a rematch. I was fueled by a lot of anger, and I walked around with that for years. Instead, he would do battle with Joe Frazier again. It 
went much like the first fight. George Foreman wins in the fifth round by a technical knockout and dreams a whole new dream. Another match against Muhammad Ali. In my mind, there only exists one piece of tension, and that's for the heavyweight championship of the world. And I do like I would like to avenge the only defeat I ever had against you know who. I'm not gonna give him no publicity. Still, the rematch with Ali was not given. George's love for the sport of boxing had begun to wane. He would lose a close decision to Jimmy Young. And Jimmy Young, who said he had a religious experience after the loss to Young. Others called it heat prostration in Puerto Rico in 1977. And then he would retire unceremoniously. You want everybody, oh, that's okay, man. You know, you, you come back, it's still just a fight. But then all of a sudden, he, things started happening in that room. He was rushed to the hospital, and the press was told that Foreman had become overcome by the heat. But George felt he had suffered more than a momentary blackout. The feared brute, known as Big George Foreman, disappeared from the public consciousness. During a 10-year break from boxing, George Foreman contemplated what Ali had taken from him. One of the beautiful things that he did is he acknowledged the ability of Muhammad Ali and acknowledged that loss and uh, put a shrine up in his home. This is the proof that I was in the fight with him. Punch me around the eye. I, you know, I started to not only be happy about my life, but be happy about the life I lived before and put them together and become an evangelist. Fourteen years ago, Foreman retired from boxing to preach the word of God. The little fame and fortune we get is not going to follow us in the grave, brother, sister. He would find his peace in his faith, serving as a minister for the next ten years. During that ten-year absence, at any time, did you have the desire to come back? Ten years, I didn't even shadow box. He became a terrific father. Uh, you've got five sons, I have five, five sons. daughters. I know you're very proud of all of them. They're all named George. I named all my sons George Edward Foreman. In 1984, he had started the George Foreman Youth and Community Center. He opened his own youth center, emptying his entire savings to do so. It's given money for scholarships for kids to go to school. I had to keep that up. He would hold fundraisers to keep the center going. But as his money ran out, George was in danger of losing it all. The youth center started to take every dime I could get. It started costing everything to get a foundation, lawyer fees, building. I wanted to go out and do myself, and I ran out of money, and that's the reason I even got, my, got myself back in the box. Thirteen years after losing his title, George Foreman began the seemingly impossible task of regaining it. I said, I gotta go back into boxing. I asked my wife, I said, what do you think? She said, they're gonna kill you, don't do it. You look, you're 300 pounds, you're too old, you'll never be champ of the world because they thought I wanted it overnight. But I looked in the mirror and said, you know, they're telling the truth, I'm pretty old here. Tomorrow night, veteran boxer George Foreman will put on the gloves and climb back into the ring after almost a decade in retirement. But I'm going to start from the bottom. I know how to promote. I know how to recreate. I know how to get myself back in shape. Just as unceremoniously as he had retired, he returned, fighting no-name opponents and journeymen. So I came back. I, was, I got a scale. I was 315 pounds. And then when people started to take him seriously because they were tantalized by a charming, fat old heavyweight, I just swooned at their gullibility. George was viewed as a joke, held up as an example of the decline of the sport of boxing. Cash grabbing on his past accomplishments. Well, George Foreman wins on the TKO. It is his eighth straight wins. An aging, overweight husband. They laughed at me. And people wrote me from all over the world, George, don't do it. Trying to recapture that glory. But the one thing they all had in common who would write me, there wasn't a dime in the mail. Carefully and quietly, he rounded himself back into boxing form. They laughed at me and I fought one fight after another. One after another. They laughed. The more I win, the more they would. 
joke. George Foreman is not fighting anyone. That is George Foreman, the 39-year-old ex-champ. As his competition rose, opponents were dead set on proving the old man was finished. Yeah, he still has that unbelievable punching power, even though he's got a belly and he looks like he's shambling around in his pajamas, he's, he's still got something. But here he is, three years later, so I have to salute him. Salute him for pulling off one of the great scams in boxing history, which, trust me, is saying a lot. Unlike in his first go-around, George was now a fan favorite. His lovable charisma and willingness to poke fun at himself endeared him to the masses. In boxing, no one is bigger, more admired, or more in demand. By George, I think he's got it. George had become the undisputed king of the big cell. Because George is very popular, and he deserves the popularity that he's gotten because he's a natural. There's nothing phony about it. Appearing on magazines, commercials, his own sitcom. But you look good, you look great. You only say that because it's true. <laughs> Foreman the boxer was famous, but Foreman the salesman was a phenom. George the Third. I was a salesman. I'd learned to be a salesman. I had 10 years out of boxing to be an evangelist, and I understood if you don't really make some noise and make people pay some attention, no one is going to stop and listen to you. At the peak of his fame, he became the spokesperson for a household grilling product, the George Foreman Grill earning Foreman nearly five million a month from sales. And then all of a sudden the checks just started rolling in. That, that, that This thing sold over 100 million. Right, and to give the checks some context too, you end up being bought out, I think, for something like 140 million dollars after what you had already made. This is my George Foreman family-sized grill that No, it is it. It's my George Foreman griddle that cooks and cooks. Everybody likes a jolly fat man. Well, one thing people love about him, you saw right there, the highest knockout percentage in the history of all heavyweight champions. Part of George Foreman's odyssey in this comeback, up and down the scale. Thus, seems like yesterday's weigh-in. Yes, his first return fight, he weighed 267. Here he is three years later, 263. You've heard of the diet formula, what is it, slim fast? Slim I think fast. George has developed slim slow. It doesn't appear like George is hitting hard, but once he hits the guy, he totally paralyzes his opponents. Boom, perfect timing. Rodriguez goes down. Foreman, who demolished Joe Frazier to capture the world crown 17 years ago, is making a remarkable comeback. Now shaven-headed, he's recorded 22 victories on his way to another shot at the world title. And it wasn't long before a super fight against heavyweight champion Van der Holyfield was in high demand. In what would be, at that time, the biggest payday in heavyweight history. George said, I may be old, I may be fat, but he said, here I is. Mark, with a 28-year-old Evander Holyfield, undisputed heavyweight champion, and for the first defense, he's fighting a 42-year-old George Foreman. The pundits were convinced the fight was more farce than anything. So a lot of people made a big deal about this as being a farce beforehand. You think that George, even though you say Holyfield is going to... Seemingly impervious to pain, George seems to have uh, absorbed those punches in the previous round rather well there. He uh, did. The first round I gave to George because I think he legitimately hurt Evander in the last 30 seconds. Round six scheduled. For the winner by unanimous decision. And still. Uh, it's trite to say, but Foreman was a winner in many respects here tonight as well. Ultimately, Foreman was beaten on points, but the way he fought proved that the second coming of Big George Foreman was no mirage. 
like the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah. Never will you ever see this again. George, are you... It'll take 50 years before another generation sees something like this. Are you... We're a man closer to 50, 60 than he is to 20 and 19. Show the whole world by going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and the young man is holding on for his breath, and we keep going. Boy, I tell you, what is happening to the world? All senior citizens around the world can be proud of themselves. Hip, hip, hooray! Like a lot of fans, I started to think to myself, George, you've thrilled us, you've been great, you've inspired us, you've entertained us, but now, please, isn't it time to go back to the old fishing hole before you seriously get hurt? A few days after Michael Mora beat Evander Holyfield, I got a call from George, and I said, George, you can't kid me, you want to fight Michael Mora. And he said more than anything else in the world. When Michael Moore defeated Holyfield to become the new champion, George Foreman, at age 45, would get one final shot. I knew what Teddy told me, like, this is a, he's a big con. And I just look at him like, hey, go get me a sandwich and sit down. Man, you're so fake. Featuring the clown king of the sport, the larger-than-life George Foreman. Well, there are a lot of skeptics out there who think that George now is more King Con than King Kong. But George hasn't earned this a championship shot as a fighter. He hasn't fought in a year and a half, and on that inauspicious occasion, he lost to Tommy Morrison. Uh, with, with, with the fighter he's fighting, he's going to have to punch and punch and try to club him and just keep beating him. But I don't think that's going to happen. So you see no chance that George can win the fight? Very little. Very little. Foreman looked to become the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history. But despite the optimism of the crowd, Few gave Foreman more than a puncher's chance. Middle-aged men don't knock out 25-year-old heavyweight champions. He would be the oldest to win the heavyweight title by a huge margin over Walker, who was 37, when he beat Ezra Char. I always thought if the George Foreman from the Rumble in the Jungle had the brain of the George Foreman who fought Michael Moore, yes, that's the greatest holy. fighter ever. Uh, Let's get ready to rumble! I'm the boss man in here. Take your hands to lunch. George, how are you going to find it? The vibrations are against us, the planets are against us, and already he lost right. the first five rounds. But it's revealing that he chose to wear the same trunks on this night that he had worn in the jungle 20 years before. George Foreman in the shorts he wore that night in Zaire, the rumble in the jungle, when he lost his world heavyweight title. I told you, I told you, I'm the champion of the world. But he always saw the ghost of a Muhammad Ali, and everybody has felt all along that you're always chasing the ghost of Ali. Does this make you? George Foreman. Twenty years after being beaten by Ali, Big George Foreman recaptured the heavyweight championship, the oldest champion in the history of boxing. I'm not the greatest, but I'm the hungriest. And those guys were younger, stronger, faster, more sophisticated. But the one thing they lacked, and I had, was good old hunger. Nobody brings it home like Joe Vincent. Nobody. Make it so.